the costal cartilages, they on one side they articulate with the ribs, and this is called the costochondral joint. And the costochondral joints, all these costochondral joints are um, primary cartilaginous joint. All the ribs they have costal cartilages at their anterior ends and they articulate with them by costochondral joints. Uh, on the other side, on the other end, the costal cartilage um, articulates uh, either with the sternum, as you can see here, uh, or it articulates with the uh, costal cartilage of the rib uh, above. These joints between the costal cartilages and the sternum are called chondrosternal joints. The first joint is a primary cartilaginous joint, and uh, uh, next uh, in the series, they are synovial uh, joints. Even the uh, chondrochondral joints, that's to say the joints between the costal cartilages themselves are chondrochondral joints. The only exception here is that the costal cartilages of the um, 12th and 11th rib, and these they do not articulate with the sternum, uh, neither directly nor indirectly, and so um, these ribs are called floating ribs. Keep in mind that the costal cartilages, which are made of a hyaline cartilage, they might ossify later in life, and they might cast shadows, suspicious shadows, over the lung field in a chest x-ray. Regarding the ribs, there are 12 pairs of uh, ribs, usually 12 pairs of ribs. Sometimes there is an extra rib, either attached to a cervical vertebra, and this is called a cervical rib, or uh, it is attached to a lumbar vertebra, and so it is called a lumbar rib. A cervical rib is more common than um, a, a lumbar uh, rib and might be asymptomatic. Sometimes there is a missing uh, rib, and uh, these ribs can be uh, classified according to their um, attachments to the sternum, according to their articulation with the uh, sternum, into true ribs. And these true ribs have their costal cartilages, as you can see here. They are directly attached to the sternum, and these include uh, ribs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and um, uh, 7. And uh, so these are the uh, true ribs. Um, they, they are costal cartilages. It is not the rib itself, but the costal cartilage that articulates directly with the sternum. And then we have uh, ribs 8, 9, and 10. Uh, these are called the false ribs. And um, because they are costal cartilages, they articulate with the costal cartilage of the rib above. And through that, they articulate indirectly with the sternum. So they are the um, false ribs. And then the last two ribs in the series, rib 11 and 12, they have costal cartilages, but the costal cartilages, they do not articulate with the sternum at all, so they are called floating ribs. So again, we classify the ribs as true ribs, whose costal cartilages articulate directly with the sternum, and um, false ribs, whose costal cartilages articulate indirectly with the sternum, and floating ribs, whose costal cartilages do not articulate with the sternum at all. The ribs are also classified as typical and atypical um, ribs according to the uh, bony features that are present on the rib. This is the typical rib. As you can see that um, the rib is long, it is flattened, uh, it is curved and a slightly twisted bone. Um, the, the rib has a head, this is the head of the rib, and then the neck, it has a tubercle, and you can see that the, therefore the neck of the rib extends between the head of the rib and the tubercle, and then the body or the shaft of the rib. In the typical rib, the body of the rib has a superior border and inferior border. It has an external surface and an internal surface. The superior border of the rib is blunt, and the inferior border of the rib is a little bit sharp. And you can see here that the body of the rib, or the shaft of the rib, is curved, and there is a point here which represents the point of maximum curvature of the rib, and this is called the angle of the rib. Usually, in the typical rib, the angle of the rib is lateral to the tubercle of the rib. The head of the rib has two facets. These are uh, flat surfaces, 
and these articulate with the costal facet on the body of vertebrae. So the head articulates with the body of a thoracic vertebra. And um, the um, neck of the rib provides for the attachment of ligaments. The tubercle of the rib, it has a medial facet for the articulation with the um, a facet on the transverse process of a vertebra, of a thoracic vertebra. So um, one articular facet for a joint which is called a costotransverse joint because it is between the rib and the transverse process of the thoracic vertebra. And this joint is not present in all the ribs. It's only um, uh, present in some of the ribs, the upper ribs, one to ten uh, ribs. Then the tubercle has another uh, a region which is located a little bit lateral. It's a, it's a slightly rough region and this is for the attachment of a ligament which is known as the lateral costo transverse ligament. The angle of the rib represents as I said the point of maximum curvature and it is the point that uh, usually when uh, the ribs are stressed usually they um, uh, fracture at the angle of the rib but this does not mean that uh, all the fractures of the rib occur at the angle of the rib. The internal surface of the rib and close to the inferior border of the internal surface of the rib, the border that is a sharp border, you can see that there is a groove, a costal groove. Now, this is characteristic here and this costal groove, it shelters a neurovascular bundle, intercostal neurovascular bundle consisting of intercostal vein, artery, and nerve. Uh, that's to say, van from above downwards. And this is uh, sheltered in the costal groove and the neurovascular bundle thus is located close to the inferior border of the rib. The anterior end of the rib articulates with a costal cartilage at a costochondral joint, which is a primary cartilaginous joint. And the posterior end of the rib, which is at the head of the rib, as I said, that there are two facets for synovial joint articulation with the body of um, thoracic vertebrae. They do not articulate with the body of the uh, same vertebra. The upper facet here articulates with the um, body of the vertebra above in the series, and the lower facet here articulates with the body of the vertebra, which is cor numerically corresponding to the number of the rib. The facet on the the tubercle of the rib articulates with the transverse process of the numerically corresponding vertebra. The ridge here in between the two facets is related to the intervertebral disc which is located between two vertebrae because this facet articulates with the vertebra above so the wedge is related to the intervertebral disc. This is the typical rib. This is the typical rib, but there are atypical ribs. The atypical ribs are the first rib, second rib, 11th, and 12th ribs. The first rib has a single facet on the uh, head of the rib uh, to articulate with the body of the first thoracic vertebra because this rib does not articulate with a vertebra above since the vertebra above T1 is a cervical vertebra and it does not contain um, a costal facet on its body. So the head of the first rib has a single facet uh, on, on it to articulate with the body of the first thoracic vertebra, and then the neck, and then the new tubercle of the rib. The tubercle of the first rib here, it coincides with the angle of the uh, rib, and um, as we go down in the uh, number of ribs, then the angle of the rib will become more and more lateral. This rib, uh, it is uh, short, it is high, and it is um, flat in such a way that the, it has a superior surface and inferior surface. Um, it has an inner border and outer uh, border. If we compare it to the typical rib, like this one, uh, the typical rib has an outer surface or external surface and internal surface. It has a superior border and inferior border, but this one, it has an inner border and outer border, a superior surface and an inferior uh, surface. 
Also, it is characterized by the presence of a tubercle here on the inner border of the first rib, and this is called the scalene tubercle, and it's for the attachment of the scalenous anterior uh, muscle. Since the scalenous anterior muscle is attached here, therefore the uh, surface, the upper surface of the first rib in front of scalenous anterior is related to the subclavian vein, while um, the surface of the rib, uh, superior surface of the rib behind the uh, scalene tubercle is related to the subclavian artery and the lower trunk of the brachial plexus. The second rib has all the features of the typical rib, but it became atypical because of the presence of a tuberosity here, characteristic tuberosity, and this is tuberosity for serratus anterior muscle. This does not indicate that serratus anterior muscle is only attached to the second rib because serratus anterior has eight digitations and it arises from the upper eight ribs, but it just happened that on the second rib it um, uh, makes a um, uh, very prominent tuberosity on the second rib which characterizes it and makes it uh, different from the typical ribs and that's why the second rib is a typical rib. The 11th and 12th ribs, they are short. Um, the head of the 11th and 12th ribs, both of them, they have a single facet uh, to articulate with the body of T11 and uh, T12 uh, thoracic vertebra. And as you can see that both of them, they do not have tubercles. So they don't have tubercles. There is no costotransverse transverse joint here in both of uh, these. They only articulate with the body of uh, thoracic uh, vertebra. And um, the 11th rib, a little bit longer than the 12th rib, it has a very shallow costal groove on its uh, inferior border and a, a very um, shallow angle here. But the 12th rib, it doesn't have a costal groove, it doesn't have an angle, so there is no tubercle and single facet on the, the 12th rib.